Buenas. Now we will move on to the roll call by the town clerk. Councillor Backer. Present. Councillor Dill. Here. Councillor Lennon. Here. Councillor Lynch. Here. Councillor McKenney. Here. Councillor Rowe. Here. Councillor Swift Cayetta. Here. Okay, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> now it is my uh, honor to present the Ralph T. Gould Award. This award, established in 1986, was named for Ralph Gould to recognize his community service and subsequently to recognize those who provide community service in the same spirit as Ralph Gould. Ralph Gould was the first recipient, and there have been 18 other recipients since that time, and all of them have given legendary service to our community, including helping the elderly, preserving the environment, founding the Cape Courier, and serving as volunteers in many capacities with the town and with the school department. Tonight, for the 20th time, we had someone whose service in any single year would qualify her for this re recognition. And this person has provided service for the community for over 30 years. As in other years, we also note that this award clear was clearly long overdue. The town is fortunate to have so many citizens who give to the community. And while our choice seems obvious, it is a testament to this year's honoree that her qualifications truly stand above the rest. This year's recipient is Carol Fritz. Carol, could you please come up and join me? Carol first joined the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board 30 years ago, in 1977. She eventually became the chairman of the board and was known her belief in the character of the community and, how, and that it should be maintained. She was very active in the debates over the sewer policy and served on a number of sewer study committees. 
From 1977, she served continuously in one position or another in local government until her decision not to run for re-election just one year ago. As a member of the town council from 1977 to late 2006, Carol was the chairman of the Ordinance Committee for a number of years, served on a comprehensive planning commission, and was very active on matters involving recycling and solid waste. She had a lot to do with Eco Maine becoming what it is today, and as successful as it is. She was a long-standing member of the board of directors of what is now Eco Maine, and through her efforts, recycling was enhanced through Southern Maine. She advocated for properly working septic systems. She looked at the welfare of animals and uh, focused on the rights of dog owners to co-enjoy the beaches during the off-season. <laughs> She always strongly encouraged the conservation of land, and during her tenure on the council, Gull, the Gullcrest property was purchased and the easement was placed on much of the old poor farm. The town now owns approximately 2,000 acres of land, and I know, having served with Carol, that she had a lot to do with that. Uh, she, she sought the protection of wetlands through buffers to protect wetlands, and she always supported every effort to improve the Greenbelt and encourage volunteers to assist. She believed that roads should keep their character and any changes need, needed to be sensitive to the surrounding environment. As much as Carol did on the council, she was equally active in the community outside her official, official positions. She was a longtime volunteer for the Cape Elizabeth League of Voters and helped to organize a number of candidates' nights and issues forums. Carol served as a member of the board of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust and was involved in the preservation efforts of the Land Trust. And incidentally, the Land Trust um, operates another 566 acres, and much of it thanks to Carol. Uh, she helped get the swap shop at what is now the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Center off the ground as part of her continuing efforts to promote recycling. She was co-founder of the community garden at Gullcrest property, which is today a very successful model to be emulated by in other communities. Example after example could be cited for what Carol has done for the community. In recognition of all that Carol has done for Cape Elizabeth and on behalf of the entire council and the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, it gives me great pleasure to present to Carol the Ralph T. Gould Award for Community Service. Congratulations, Carol. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the honor. Um, and it's humbling to also think about all the other people who have received the award um, that are on the list that have done so much for the community. And um, I mean, one thing about serving on various committees and boards is all the people that you have an opportunity to work with and who care just as much about the community as well. So. That was wonderful, and I'd just like to thank people who came to share um, my receipt of this award tonight, and uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And incidentally, uh, Carol's name will be, actually it's right here, Carol. <laughs> It'll, it's, it's put on this plaque, and we're going to hang this plaque back up in a, in a place of honor to uh, honor all of your service. Thanks. And, um, one other thing I'd like to mention. We have approximately 16 boards and commissions and ad hoc committees in the town of Cape Elizabeth, and that represents just on the town side, not counting all the great people that help out on the school side, approximately 100 volunteers that uh, put their time and effort into making this a better community. So, and Carol, of all, of all those people, really stands out as a truly outstanding contributor.
Now we'll move on to the review of the minutes of meeting number 16-2007, held November 5th, 2007. Do we have any comments about the minutes? Cynthia. <clears throat> yes, um, on page three, with respect to the um, motion by Ann Swift Kayata to adopt the stormwater improvement fee. Yes. That was seconded by Councillor Rowe. The proposed minutes um, say that there were six in favor, one opposed, identifying Councillor Backer as being opposed, but I also was opposed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as amended? So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Now we will move to uh, reports and correspondence. Anybody? I'm sorry. Wait. Jim, we'll start with oh. you. Okay. Work our way over. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For a couple more minutes. Uh, since we last met, the Cape Elizabeth Farm Committee has held two uh, very well attended meetings. Uh, at the last, on November 28th, the committee split into four focus groups. Each group will be exploring in some detail several areas that are germane to the vitality of, of our town's working farms. Uh, the committee's next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, December 19th at 7 o'clock at the Community Center. Uh, the Strategic Manpower Planning Group for our Volunteer Emergency Services has completed its work and will soon present its findings and recommendations to the Council in the form of a report. Um, I want to give special thanks here to Donnie Carroll from Southern Maine Emergency Medical Services for facilitating our last meeting and for injecting a degree of objectivity and calm into a discussion that sometimes has the potential to arouse sensitivities. He did a great job. Uh, the Sports Done Right Committee met again and made good progress in identifying areas uh, where our youth and school athletic programs can improve. Um, we can, we'll continue that work on January 9th. And finally, at the uh, request of you, Chairman McKinney, uh, I was honored to represent our town council at the mayoral inauguration in South Portland a week ago this afternoon. Uh, my life as a town councilor has been a learning experience, and uh, at that inaugural address, uh, uh, inaugural uh, inauguration, I learned that using the word secession, uh, as Mayor Soul did in her inaugural address, can gather, garner a lot of attention. Uh, it's one way to get a quick, uh, quick uh, to get your name in the, in the local newspaper. Seriously, though, I was, I was very happy to extend our greetings and goodwill uh, to the mayor and to several South Portland councilors. I think there was a very strong desire in that group uh, to work collaboratively with Cape Elizabeth, and I look forward to doing that. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. <coughs> Cynthia? Yes, um, I would just like to report that on the 17th of December at 7.30, there is going to be a workshop um, to follow up on the design workshop that was held um, in connection with the intersection of Route 77 and Shore Road. And I would welcome anyone who's interested, um, even if you didn't have a chance to attend the design workshop, um, to come and listen um, while we deliberate. Um, I think there'll be some good information, I hope, forthcoming from the Maine Department of Transportation and the town manager and um, keep that uh, project moving forward. So that's um, the 17th at 7.30. Thank you. Sarah? Uh, I'm delighted to be working with the Alternative Energy Committee, <clears throat> a group of passionate, professional, and extremely bright people who are taking their charge very seriously. Um, <clears throat> the group is focused and organized, pragmatic and visionary, and I'm thrilled to be a member of the committee. And I look forward to uh, periodic progress reports to the council. Very briefly, so that the Cape residents know what the purpose and charge of the committee is, I'm just going to read the charter two sentences. The committee will explore opportunities to provide alternative energy to municipal and school buildings and vehicles. The committee will make recommendations in the form of a report to the town council and the school board by December 2008 providing specific proposals and cost estimates, including the cost to implement recommendations and projected cost savings. Uh, and just quickly, any citizens with any interest or input to the committee can go to the website to get the email contacts of the group. Excellent. Thank it's really, you. really fun. Great group. That's wonderful. Anybody else? 
Okay. Oh, Jim. I'd like to congratulate you and Marianne on your re-elections. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Okay. That's great. Uh, Michael, town manager's report. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make note of a, a couple of personnel uh, issues and also uh, a, a very special mention. Some of you may have known uh, Constance Murray, uh, Connie Murray. Uh, Connie was the founder of the Cape Elizabeth Historic Preservation Society, and uh, she passed away last Thursday. It hasn't been in the newspaper yet, but uh, she really, you know, even though she the last 10 or so years, she lived in South Portland, uh, first at a condo and then at the Cape, the Cape Elizabeth home, which is in South Portland. She always kept her devotion to Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the Historic Preservation Volunteers every Thursday come to the library and, and actually until, you know, the last couple of months, uh, you know, Connie would still be there every, every Thursday morning uh, helping to, to do that, sometimes with her dog there and whatever, uh, which, you know, wasn't widely advertised in the library. But she was uh, really a, a remarkable woman and, uh, you know, uh, the whole effort to preserve records in Cape Elizabeth really grew out of uh, Dr. Murray's devotion. And she hated being called Dr. Murray. She, uh, she had a PhD and whatever it was. but. Uh, she was just a, a wonderful person and obviously is, is part of the old Murray family here in Cape, Cape Elizabeth. Some of you might have known Elmer Murray, who uh, would be uh, Connie's uh, a nephew, Wayne Murray, a former fire chief, former council chairman, another nephew. But uh, she, she was really a, a unique person and uh, gave an awful lot to this community. Again, even though she, you know, she would have received the Ralph Gould Award for some point, except she moved to South Portland and uh, it needed to be the qualifications have a citizen of Cape Elizabeth. So anyway, I understand there's going to be a memorial service probably sometime in the spring uh, for Connie, but uh, just a, a great, great person who, who did so much. Uh, it was also announced that Phil McGoldrick is retiring. Uh, in uh, January, I'll have comments to make about, about Phil next month since uh, He'll still be here for next month's council meeting, but there's a lot of questions about what's the process going to be and, and whatever. And I just wanted to indicate that next Thursday, this Thursday, the 13th, uh, in the evening, I'm going to be meeting with a group called the Board of Engineers, which, which consists of the elected leadership of the companies of the department, the rescue company, the fire police unit, the wet team, engine two and engine one. And uh, with them, I'm going to be sharing my views on the way the process ought to continue. It will include their involvement to a certain degree. Uh, it will include, you know, additional, you know, the position will be fully advertised. And I would hope that, you know, we will go through a, a very participatory process uh, that I first, you know, feel I ought to explain directly to them uh, on Thursday how I s see it. Uh, going, but if you get any questions, what then happens is under the charter it's my appointment and then it comes back to the council for confirmation. So that, you know, I'm looking at probably advertising the position beginning in the, the Sunday telegram this coming Sunday and, you know, through the, the fire chiefs network, although it's pretty widely known that Phil is retiring and I think, uh, you know, those that are interested in the position are probably on the lookout for, uh, for knowledge of it. But uh, anyway, but I'll comment on Phil next, next month. Uh, we did want to mention Vaughn Dyer, who some of you might know. Uh, it, was, it was in the quarry of the last couple of days, uh, retired on December 1st as a police officer from the town of Cape Elizabeth. And Vaughn gave 32 years uh, to the Cape Elizabeth uh, uh, Police Department. He's our, he was our second longest serving employee after Ed Hunt, uh, one of our dispatchers. And uh, Vaughn, you know, had a tremendous knowledge of the community, had a lot of participation, uh, you know, through, particularly, you know, through through other organizations as well. Uh, but, you know, just very, very active police officer, very dedicated. And, you know, I think he, he's typical of, of the, the dedication uh, that, that those folks give over many years uh, uh, to the police service and to the community. Uh, there's going to be a uh, pizza party type thing on January 8th at the uh, training room at the fire department uh, for friends of Vaughn that, that wish to drop in. Uh, as a way of uh, uh, honoring uh, his service, uh, tremendous service to the community. Uh, beyond that, I did want to mention Laura Palanzer as well, who was the ACP office manager. She has left us as well recently. Uh, she, uh, we're going to miss her as well. She wasn't here quite as long as uh, the other individuals, but I know you all joined me in uh, wishing uh, her well. She's uh, 
uh, relocated out of state uh, at this point in time. So uh, we, uh, we wish her well and thank her for her service. Uh, beyond that, I, she's not here anymore, but I do want to publicly thank uh, Deborah Lane uh, for organizing uh, all of the activities relating to the presentation of the Ralph Gould Award and uh, particularly the reception that we had uh, prior to the council meeting. So uh, she's probably there still organizing the, the reception, but I do want to publicly thank her for all those efforts. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Michael. Okay, we'll move on to uh, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. <laughs> we have no volunteers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll go, we'll go to the next item. Then. Item number one, dash 2008. I need a uh, motion for this. Ann. I move uh, that we uh, elect as town, town council chairman for the council year 2008, Mary Ann Lynch. Second. Thank you, Jim. Okay, there will be no discussion on this. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. Good to switch, huh? Thank you. It's really a privilege to serve with all of you and to serve as your chairman this year. And I look forward to it. And uh, I think we'll have a good year. I'm sure we will. All right. Can you your presentation down there? Yes. Yeah. Paul, if you would follow me down to the podium. Okay. You know this is the chair I started in. <laughs> <laughs> Things come full circle, Paul. Okay. I wanted to, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't take that out yet. I wanted to thank you, Paul, on behalf of um, the council and also the citizens of Cape Elizabeth for your service as council chair. Uh, this past year, um, under your leadership, we made a great progress towards all of our goals, and I think most notably uh, the adoption of the Comprehensive Plan on October 10th, which is um, a credit to your um, good leadership and um, the, the way you just managed that process. Um, and and I, sh it, I should mention that you did this while you were still continuing your service uh, to the Army Reserve as um, an officer. And so Paul was uh, many weekends out of state but continued to fulfill all of his duties to the, to the council. Uh, and at the same time, he was also um, recognized for his leadership abilities by Greater Portland Council of Governments where he served, at, was elected and is serving as president of Greater Portland Council of Governments. So, um, it's not just your colleagues here, but I think your colleagues in the greater Portland area that recognize your leadership. Um, finally, Paul, just a personal note, I have had many people comment to me in recent weeks um, about what a great job they thought you did as chair. And um, I personally um, felt that I learned a lot from you, um, your patience and uh, the way you've conducted meetings. Um, those of us who've been chair know it's not always easy with a room full of people, but um, you did it in just a very special way. So um, hopefully I can carry that um, with me next year. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. For your service. We have a plaque. Thank you. <laughs> with a gavel. Well, I always <laughs> right. wanted a gavel. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thanks for your nice comments. I appreciate that. I hope I covered them all. Yes, I think I did. Okay. I, I would like to say a, a couple of words, and, and just briefly, I would like to thank all of you, my colleagues on the council, for everything that you did. And, and I think the reason we had such a successful year in 2007 is because I have such a great group of colleagues to work with. And we have a, a wonderful town manager as well. And every one of you contributed a great deal to uh, our success, and we did accomplish a great deal. And, and, I, and I attribute that to, to your efforts, to your you know, attention to the, the work at hand, and to all of the volunteers I mentioned before. You know, we have over 100 volunteers and various boards and commissions and committees that contribute 
to this community, and I think that's what makes this such a special community to be part of. So I, I thank you very much, and uh, it was a pleasure to serve as your chairman. Thank you, Paul. I have big shoes to fill here. I know that, but size um, 14. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening, but I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Um, the second item on the agenda is adoption of our town council rules for our 2008 year. Do I have a motion? Ann? Move to accept. And is there a second? Second. Sarah, and is there any debate? And seeing none, all in favor? Okay, show it to be unanimous. And item number three is the um, appointment of the finance um, chairman and the appointment of the Finance Committee. Do I have a motion? So moved. Oh, can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to making <laughs> the motions. I, I, I move <laughs> that um, we appoint James S. Rowe as the chairman of the Council Finance Committee. And the Council as a and whole? And the Council as a whole to serve on the Finance Committee. And is there a second? Second. second. Okay, David. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, show it to be unanimous. And item number four is the appointment of the Ordinance Committee. Do I have a motion? I want to join. Sarah. I move that we appoint Cynthia Dill as chairman of the Ordinance Committee with Sarah Lennon and James Rowe as members. And is there a second? A oh. second motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Show it to be unanimous. And item five is appointment of the appointments committee. Do I have a motion? Cynthia. Yes, I move that we appoint Ann E. Swift Kayata as chairman and David J. Backer and Paul J. McKenney as members of the appointments committee. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Jim. And is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Show it to be unanimous. <coughs> Okay, item number six is the appointment of representatives to the Eco Maine Board of Directors. Do I have a motion? Ann? I move that we appoint Marianne Lynch and Michael McGovern as our representatives to Eco Maine's Board of Directors. I second the motion. Okay, um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Show it to be unanimous. And. Um, Item number seven is appointment of our representative, that is Cape Elizabeth's representative, to the Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee. Jim? I would move that we appoint uh, Paul J. McKenney to the Council of Governments uh, Executive Committee. Is there a second? Ann? And discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, show it to be unanimous. Item number eight is appointment of the representative and the alternate to the Greater Portland Council of Governments General Assembly. I have a motion. Paul? I move that we appoint James S. Rowe as our primary and David J. Backer as the alternate to be representatives at uh, the Greater Portland Council of Government General Assembly. A second? Second. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? It is unanimous. Item number nine is appointment of the representative to the PACS Policy Committee. Uh, Cynthia. I move that we appoint Michael K. McGovern as our representative to the PACS Policy Committee. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Seeing there is discussion. <laughs> 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 Cynthia. I just want to wish our representative to the PACS uh, Policy Committee Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I want to encourage you to do whatever it takes to get our project moving um, with respect to the intersection of Shore Road and 77. And I, anything I can do to support you in that effort, I'm happy to do so. Thank you very much. Does Sperwink, Sperwink Representative Dale. <laughs> Sperwink comes out of Sperwink. tax as well. Yeah. So let's, I could let's give you a little update on that. Spurwick. I'll do it at the end of the let's meeting. Let's have that at the end, but I think we would like to have an update on that, as well as the high school traffic light. So all in favor? That's unanimous. 
Item number 10 is appointment of Cape Elizabeth's representative to the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Committee. Motion, Jim. I would move that we appoint uh, Annie Swift Kayata as our representative for the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee. And the second? Second. Sarah, thank you. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? That would be unanimous. And item 11 is appointment of the town council representative to the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. And Madam Chair, I uh, move that we appoint David Backer to be our representative to the Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. And is there a second? Second. Jim, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That would be unanimous. Thank you. And um, item 12 is the appointment of the council representative to the Thomas Mem Memorial Library Study Committee. Sarah. I move that we appoint Ann Swift Kayata <clears throat> as our representative to the Thomas Memorial Library Study Committee. And is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Okay, that would be unanimous. Item 13 is the appointment of the council representative to the Alternative Energy Committee. Cynthia? Yes, I uh, move that we appoint Sarah W. Lennon as our representative to the Alternative Energy Committee. And a second? A Paul? Second. Discussion? All in favor? That would be unanimous. Okay, item 14, appointment of uh, town council representative to the Shore Road Pathway Study Committee. Anne? I move that we appoint Cynthia Dill to be our representative to the Shore Road Pathway Study Committee. And a second. 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 Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That would be unanimous. Marianne, the, the staff would like to withdraw our item 15. We were so excited we put it on the agenda twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, Actually, it was I, I, I think that item 15 should be amended to be um, an appointment to the of the members of the Thomas Jordan Grants Committee, which has been left off. What? Yeah. Oh, that that Portland headlight a left off because you do that with separate hats on at a different time. Okay, separate boards. All right. Okay, and um, so that would be the end of our appointments, and uh, I think the way that. Um, Cynthia? Well, I just um, wonder if we need to appoint our council uh, members, Backer and I, to the Hannaford Field Committee? Mm -hmm. I think the policy was you still You continue. stay on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I think that's Once right. Once appointed, you're there. And, and I, I think the sim same is true of the Spurwink. Church there? Committee. Yes, the Spurwink, Church. usually the building committees. Yeah. That's how it's done, so that there's continuity. Okay. Um, well, at this point um, in the meeting, I would open up our public hearing on the proposed cable television franchise agreement. And I will open it, and seeing no one here except the press, I will close it. And the next item is item 16, the proposed cable television franchise agreement. Michael, do you want to yes, introduce I'll, this, please? I would. Uh, as is indicated in the memorandum and the material, the franchise agreement uh, for public cable, uh, public cable, originally given to public cable, is now expiring now, uh, Time One Entertainment Company uh, Limited Partnership. Uh, we did receive a letter from the town attorney with several suggestions on this. Uh, we forwarded it on to Time Warner Cable. We've heard nothing uh, back from them. Uh, but yet I thought it was still important that you know, the public hearing go on and that, that people have an opportunity before the thing is agreed to to provide any comments they wish. So I'm, I'm pleased that there was the opportunity for public comment. But, I'd, you know, I'd, after the any council questions there may be, I think it would be appropriate to table item 16 to the January meeting. Okay. Are there any questions? David. Um, can, can you summarize any changes from the existing agreement for us? I'd be happy to. It, it really follows the model of the, the prior agreements. Uh, the significant, it, it has the same time periods, the same renewal. Uh, it 
you know, there's been an evolution, though, in, uh, in the regulation of, of cable provisions. The FCC almost totally ties our hands. It's my impression that whatever the Council approves will again be uh, abrogated uh, by the Federal Communications Commission within the next year uh, for some other change. The one major change in this, worth noting, though, is that the franchise fee is currently 3 percent. This would change the franchise fee to 5 percent. Uh, 86 percent of the communities in the country with franchise agreements have the 5 percent. Uh, we're very much in, in the minority on that. And one of the recommendations in the comprehensive plan is that we, we focus more on user fees and, and uh, you know, that we try to lower the, the, the property tax base for those using a certain service. So this is in keeping with that recommendation of the comp plan. That's, those are the highlights. Thank you. I just had a question uh, on what was included in our packet. Uh, I first came across it on page 13, Article 4. Uh, it references a uh, schedule of tables and so forth yes. in the back. Uh, I see a table of schedules and exhibits, but I don't see the schedules and exhibits themselves. Is that customary to not include those in our? It, it would be, they haven't provided them yet. They plan to provide them at the final agreement, but it's the, you know, it's the standard list of the stations we now have. It's the standard you know, rates that they, they recently mailed to all of us. Uh, you know, there's a minor rate adjustment. Have we all gotten that yet? There's a minor rate adjustment in January 1. I got a copy here. I don't remember if I got it at home yet or not. Right. Yeah, there's a minor adjustment of rates. Those will be attached to be current as of the time of the agreement. Thank you. And I assume, Michael, just uh, there are other blanks in the agreement that at the time that yeah. we really are planning to vote on this contract, right. we will have a yeah. the, the, completed. The, the one issue that we haven't resolved is what they'll provide us for equipment, which is one of those blanks. Uh, they provide, but again, what that works is they provide us equipment, and then they simply add it on to the bills of the customers. So it's something, you know, we're going to look at very carefully in terms of uh, making sure that uh, the, the revenues that that they attempt to collect from the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, what we ask for, are only truly what we need and not uh, additional things. And Michael, what equipment do you mean? You mean the equipment Cameras that we have and whatever. here at the yeah. town? We, we used to say, you know, they used to send, just send us a check for that, and it was out of their, their general revenues. Well, during the last franchise agreement, they, they added both the fr franchise fee and what they call the access fee to the bill as separate add-ons which was a way, since they were taking it out of their existing revenues, and now we're putting the bills separate, it was simply a way of them, you know, adding to their, to their revenue base and, and putting the, the burden uh, of defending it off to the municipalities. Okay, thank you. Are there any further? Jim. One other question. I understand that uh, satellite technology, for example, is one way of introducing competition in this. Uh, are there any other mechanisms in place for introducing competition in the cable market? The, through you, Madam through, Chairman. To you. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the other way truly is the Internet. Uh, you know, you, you have streaming, you know, news programs, or, and that's, you know, coming. Of course, you know, they control a lot of that as well in, in this particular community. I was re recently read that, you know, their Roadrunner service has one of the highest penetration rates of, of any service of any cable service uh, in the country. You know, they, they've done very, very well of any, excuse me, uh, internet uh, service provider. Uh, they, they do very well. But that, you know, definitely the technology is changing all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they do have the satellite competitors, as, as you know now. The other, the other market that's happening is Verizon, uh, particularly it has now bundled uh, with one of the uh, satellite companies to provide uh, uh, service from the satellite as well as the, uh, the regular landline phone service, uh, as well as uh, internet. as well as internet. So, it uh, you know it, it's changing all the time. You know that's one of the things the cable companies raise is you know, why are we having to pay these fees and be regulated by local communities 
when the phone companies aren't regulated by local communities. So, of course, you know, the phone company says, why are we re regulated by the PUC when the cable company is not? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, all these issues are, you know, they're looking at regulatory reform all the time. And municipalities, you've heard this before and I'll repeat it, are always at a disadvantage because it's almost totally influenced by my view of political contributions. And if you look at the contributions of the Time Warners of the world and the Comcast and the, uh, uh, the Verizons and the Verizon Wireless, they, they are the major contributors to the political process. And local governments do not contribute anything financially to local candidates and uh, national candidates. So I think it really puts us at a, at a disadvantage, uh, particularly in Washington, uh, with uh, the FCC being political appointees of the uh, whatever administration's in office at any one point. I'm not just picking on the current one. Cynthia? Um, could you just, I think it would be helpful um, for listeners and citizens to reduce in the most simple terms what the quid pro quo is in this agreement. What do we get from Time Warner and what do we give? If we give them the right to hang wire in our right of way. Uh, in and we give, we give them then a franchise to provide cable. In return for that, uh, they give us a franchise fee. A five Which they simply collect from the citizens as an add-on to the bill. Mm. Thank you. Plus, they, they, do, and they do provide public access channels. Uh, although, you know, we run them at our own expense, they do provide the, uh, the, uh, the connection, you know, to this system, which is, which is fairly significant. You know, if you can imagine, you, you know, if we weren't on camera, these meetings, you know, we, we take it for granted now, but uh, you know, at some point you never know that that service could, could disappear as well. Thank you. And that's still in here, that they still would provide the initial one and potentially a second one uh, as well. Sarah and then David. Uh, how is the Roadrunner uh, internet, computer internet access related to this? It's, it's owned by Time Warner. You know, in, initially, we collected franchise fee on that as well, and they got a ruling from the, uh, the FCC that it, was, it only applied to, to their cable TV service. Then you get into issues, and I've, I've got notes somewhere, I, I didn't bring them with me, on what percentage of the bundling fee is for uh, cable, what percentage is for the internet, what percentage is phone, it's a little unclear because you really don't know where the discounts were applied. And actually, they gave me those numbers. I, I saw them and detected in a file somewhere, and they, I felt, looking at them, they were very reasonable. But, uh, you know, the Internet, they provide over the same wire, but it, the FCC has ruled that we, we, we do not in any manner regulate or can assess any fees on uh, the, the use of our right-of-way for their Internet purposes. David? Does the manager have a recommendation for the length of time for this to be tabled? Uh, just to the January meeting, I'm hoping that perhaps uh, we'll get a response from them. One of the issues with Time Warner took over Adelphia, and they've got all these communities that they deal with, and plus they're dealing with the legislature and they're dealing with the feds. And uh, they, you know, they, they really, you know, at one point there was a special relationship between the municipalities and the cable company. Uh, over the years, you know, they, where a nuisance they need to put up with, I think, is the way they look at us. But, uh, but, they, but they do it nicely. They do it kindly. They're, they're nice folks, but they, we don't necessarily hear back from them as often as we'd like to. And I, I do think Time Water actually does an excellent job in this community of providing services. We've always been amongst the first in the nation to roll out technology. We were the second market in the country for, for Roadrunner and for cable modems. And, and I, was, I actually read something the other day. I was looking into it. We've had internet cable modem service since 1997. Uh, and you know, it's, it's really been unique in terms of what they've done with us. We were one of the first markets in the country that they gave the ability to provide telephone service, a program they, they were calling Line Runner at the beginning, but I forget what they call it now. But uh, we were one of the very first to have phone service over over uh, the cable, so you know they they really do a remarkable job. And as much as you know, I get offended sometimes by uh, you know the overall regulatory environment of, of cable. I have to concede that Time Warner uh, is really a good citizen of the Greater Portland area and has really treated Cape Elizabeth well over the years. 
Further questions? Is there, David? I move we uh, table item 16 2008 further discussion and approval of the proposed cable television franchise agreement until our regular January 2008. And is there a second? I second that. All and uh, tabling motions not debatable. So all in favor? Okay, please show that to be unanimous. Now, item 17 is the annual special amusement permit and club license for the Perputa Club. Do I have a motion? I move that we um, renew the annual special amusement permit and club license for Perputa Club. Second. Second. Okay, and I would note um, just for the record we have uh, uh, memos in our packet from uh, the police chief and the code enforcement officer that both uh, sign off that the Perpuda Club has not presented any problems to the community and I know many of us feel that they've been very good corporate citizens um, in any number of ways. But Ann? Um, I'd like to just disclose for the record that I'm a member of Perpudic, but I don't feel it will impede me from voting on this. I don't have any financial, any significant financial gain from this vote. Ditto. Oh, ditto. <laughs> okay. Just, you mentioned the chief of police. In case anyone's watching and is aware of this, the chief of police did disclose in his memorandum yes. that he has a part-time position. Uh, Thank you. Weekends uh, with Perpudic uh, works on greens. So. Thank you. During the season. Okay. So, um, any discussion? Cynthia. I just have a question. Um, is the um, application for a special amusement permit something that's required by any organization in Cape Elizabeth that wants to have dancing? Well, if you can answer that, Michael. If liquor is served, yes. If liquor is served and you want to have dancing, you have to get a special amusement permit? Yes. Okay. And my other question is, um, the, I noticed that the permit is ten dollars. I'm just curious how is that a fee that's been ten dollars for ever? Um, I'm not sure how long it's been in place, but it's been in place under ordinance for for some time. Okay. Thank you. Set by ordinance, not by the legislature. Correct. Mm -hmm. I defer. I don't know. It's a local fee. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? I'd show that to be unanimous, please. And we are at item 18, the recommendation from the Appointments Committee, appointments to boards and commission. Anne, your chairman, do you yes. have a report? Thank you. And motion? Um, I would uh, first like to report that uh, the Appointments Committee for 2007, the one that was just finishing up, um, saw a, a great number of excellent candidates for the Shore Road Pathway Study Committee. We appreciate people coming out and volunteering for this. We were, it was a very um, interested group of folks and I think we have a, a good balance of people on the committee. Uh, we are recommending the following residents to serve on this committee. Joseph Chalot, or is it Chalot? I can't remember. Sorry. Howard Littlefield, Andy Mahoney, Suzanne McGinn, George Morse, Bill Nickerson, and Paul Thielen. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? I, I just wanted to say, oh, Cynthia, go ahead. Oh, just as the town councilor representative on this committee, I thank the appointments committee for putting together what looks like a great group of people, and I'm really excited to start working on the project. I just wanted to say, as a uh, member of the appointments committee uh, last month, um, and interviewing the 19 people that applied, um, the, as Anne said, the quality of the applicants was just really great, and. Uh, any one of it was one of the more difficult jobs that I had in my four years on the appointments committee. Any one of the 19 people um, would have served very ably, and uh, I would just say to those folks who were not appointed, 
to please apply again and stay interested because um, we just had a very, we had a great problem. We had a lot of great people and not enough seats, but um, it just, it was a great group of people. And if I could add just for those who might be watching, um, I, I think not only do, does this group have great personal qualities, but I think also we've tried to touch upon a, a whole different, a number of different constituencies. So we have people who are residents of Shore Road or butters to Shore Road. Um, we have people who are parents of small children, people who are parents of school-aged children, people who are walkers, cyclists, runners, uh, you know, people who use that area in all sorts of different ways. And so I think we'll have a really good mix on the committee. So I just wanted to add that. And I also wanted to add that the 2008 appointments committee meeting uh, is meeting um, starting tomorrow evening. And I know we even still got one more um, application in today. So this is the annual filling of all the boards and commissions openings for all the other boards and commissions, not, this, uh, not the special board and commission board that this is. And I would encourage anybody, um, I would first of all thank all the applicants who have um, put their names forward to assist the town on all these boards and commissions and I look forward to interviewing them with the, with the other members of appointments. And um, anybody who wants to throw in their their uh, candidacy at the last minute, um, you know, I think we'd still consider it. So we, we, uh, we're looking for, for good people who will help the town. So thank you. Great. Well, we've had a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And please show that to be unanimous. Item 19 is the acceptance of the 2007 gifts and donations, and there is a list in your packet, um, which contains all of the donations and gifts um, made to the town, um, I guess for the year 2007 up through through November, through November 28th. So is there a motion? David? I move the uh, acceptance of all gifts and donations made to the town of Cape Elizabeth through November 28, 2007 for Second. the calendar year. Second. Second. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank um, on behalf of the council all of the people on this list who have um, so generously contributed to all kinds of uh, things. Um, I don't want to single any anyone out because they're all very generous um, and noteworthy but I, I do feel I do need to just point out the kids turf uh, committee um, collectively raised um, well over six hundred thousand um, dollars for the turf field so um, without taking away any of from any of the other uh, donors who were very generous um, the Kids Turf Committee really made that happen this year. So we want to thank everyone involved in all of these gifts and also especially the Kids Turf Committee. So we've had a motion and a second. All in favor? And that would be unanimous also, Ruthie. <clears throat> Item 20 is the recommendation from the Planning Board regarding garage sales. And there is a memorandum in your package. Michael, is there anything you want to say on this? I'll just mention for the record that the this was referred uh, to the planning board a couple of months ago. Uh, there was this letter received on garage sale limitation. The citizen who sent the letter to the planning board was involved in the discussion of this and is in concurrence with the planning board recommendation that there be no limitation. Uh, at this time, the, the understanding and the agreement is and a belief that the recent amendments to the signed ordinance uh, should address the issue. Okay. Do we need a motion to accept mm. the recommendation? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? That's unanimous. And item 21 is the renewal of the lease for the family crisis services for building number 324 at Fort Williams Park. Michael? Yes, this is a successor five-year lease for uh, 
the family crisis shelter offices. They, they do business as family crisis services. Uh, they have the smaller of the two buildings at Fort Williams Park. Uh, the rent is proposed to increase roughly 3 percent each year. Uh, they, they pay for all the, the heating and the utilities and all of that. Uh, our, our obligation is to plow the parking lot. Uh, to, to, we do maintain the exterior of the building and we do receive these rental amounts. It's, uh, you know, it's limited what we can receive with some of these buildings. They're, they're, they're nice buildings, but at the same time, that they're, they're not fully accessible inside and there's, there's limitations uh, by policy who they can be rented toward. But uh, Family Crisis Shelter does, in addition to you know, being a, a, a Landlord, us having a tenant landlord relationship with them, they also do provide services to to many Cape Elizabeth people in need. I think the last year the number was lower than usual; it was about 23 uh, families were helped out uh, by the Family Crisis Services, which is good news that it was a lower number. Uh, but uh, you know, we really appreciate what this uh, what they do for people in our community. Great, thank you, Jim. I'd like to move that we uh, renew the lease of the Family Crisis Services for Building 324 at Fort Williams Park under the terms that are specified in our packets. Second. Second. Okay. Further dis discussion? All in favor? Eight, four, five, six, seven. Right, Dee? That's unanimous. And item 22 is the setting of the Town Council meeting dates for 2008. Our regular monthly uh, town council meeting is, uh, will be held on the second Monday of each month, um, except on Monday holidays when the meeting shall be held on the following Wednesday. And the regular monthly meeting um, for March will actually be changed to March 3rd. And I guess I've read what would have been a motion, so I'm having to learn this all over again myself, Paul. <laughs> David, how about a I move that we uh, um, schedule our uh, town council meeting dates uh, for the upcoming year consistent with the uh, town council rules with the exception of our March 2008 meeting um, and that that be moved from the second Monday of March to the first Monday of March in order to accommodate the schedule of Councillor Ann Swift Kayata, who will be ably representing us in her capacity as president of the Maine Municipal Association at an out of state meeting that month. I'm such a troublemaker. <laughs> I, I second, second that motion. Second, okay. Uh, discussion? Ann. Assuming that this is approved, I would like to thank everyone very much for accommodating the schedule of, of the NLC meeting. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. That's unanimous. That's good because I think we need five votes to deviate from the normal meeting. Um, I just want to, uh, before we, um, well, we have citizens' items. I don't see any citizens here. <laughs> Michael? Yes. Yeah, uh, just uh, with your permission, Madam Chairman, there was a question earlier about the status of Spurwink Avenue and uh, the traffic light. This might be a good opportunity to do it. Uh, the, the news of the traffic light at the high school is that we have heard that the parts will be in any day, the, the actual light fixtures, and they should be there within a week or so to install it. Uh, once they're there to install it, it should take one or two days. Our current thinking is, is get it up and running. Uh, even if there's no school, the way it's, it's traffic actuated, uh, people get in the habit of seeing it, which is a positive thing. And that we would probably, you know, really try to get the information out about it, but people see it in time for when folks come back from school vacation. Uh, we'll keep Jordan Way open as a secondary access into the schools in the morning as we do until Martin Luther King weekend. Uh, and then we'll, we'll close that. We've had some safety issues uh, with the traffic entering there. And at that point, we'll see the full functionality of the traffic light. Any questions on that? No. Secondly, Spurwink Avenue, the state opened bids last week. Uh, it, it, it little challenging to look at uh, because they, they included in the same bid documents a line of culvert out here on the strip uh, on Route 77. And, 
trying to segregate out those costs. The initial thing, it looked a little bit high. Uh, the, the, so we have a meeting, Bob Malley, myself, I think it's tomorrow, with MDOT to go over the bids. The, uh, the person was on vacation the last few days, so I'm hoping we can work that out. What's interesting is, is unlike most other PACS projects, John Duncan told me that if this one is over budget, they'll pick up 80% of that cost. So I'm very reluctant to, to reduce the scope of the project uh, when 80% of the cost is being brought up. One of the issues is the area that's between Wells Road and the pump station there. It's really one of the worst areas, and they were doing a reconstruction there, and there was the talk, well, maybe we won't have to do the reconstruction. Well, if that's what's needed and the feds are paying 80% of the cost, I think we should, we should hold to, to getting that done. So anyway, we plan to have the discussion with them tomorrow, make sure the costs are properly segregated out, make sure PAX is on board. And that means that, uh, that I forget the name of the contractor. It wasn't one that we usually see in Cape Elizabeth. It was a little better. But they ended up having about four bids, I think. So it was fairly competitive. The bids were close, so the prices looked be expected. So the good news is, is that looks like uh, it should be a go uh, for next spring. You probably have a, uh, you might have an, an action item on that next month, although the council doesn't need to formally recommend the bid because uh, it's a state project. But I'll, there needs to be a, what they, a town state agreement at some point, state local agreement, and we'll encourage MDOT to prepare one of those have a fear review, but uh, overall, you know, we, we were pleased that it wasn't totally out of, out of the water. Uh, what I really don't know, and don't have a handle on, like many state projects, what, did, what, did they, what are they going to spend for construction, administration, and what have they spent to date? Uh, that, that's always a concern, but I'm really pleased that unlike this project, which they would not pick up any overage, the one in back here at the town center, this particular project they will pick up. Uh, apparently uh, the, the full cost. That's good news. Of the full cost. Great. Thank you, Michael. Excuse me, could I ask one question? And is there any further news on the town center intersection? We're looking forward to the workshop next, okay. during the 17th, next Monday night. Uh, we've asked Tom Errico to do a pros and cons of uh, the, uh, of that. And I, was there anything at your spot here tonight? No. Did Maureen give you something? Yes. It was in, it was our, it was in our packet. Yeah. The but there was a... It was in the mailbox. It, so it's up in your mailboxes? Yes. Yep. yes. Up in your mailboxes is, is Tom Errico's pros and cons as well as the agenda, draft agenda, yes. for next week's meeting. Well, um, next week's an overview of the design workshop, technical evaluation of concepts by yeah. Tom Errico, budget, cost status, and there. discussion. Yep. It's up in your mailbox up front, apparently. Uh, Thank you. Good. So that's the, the update on that, Ann. Okay. Thank and that, again, that workshop is at 730, and it is right behind us in the Jordan Conference Room next Monday night. So that will be our last meeting, gathering of the, two, the two, 2007 calendar year. So I think a motion to adjourn would be in order. I had so two technical moved. items after that, too. Two technical Linda heard that, yeah. Two technical so, items. So moved. I'm, I move that we adjourn. After you adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Thank you. Well, one thing is we, we have the phone listing. If you could, up, if there's any changes, if you could look at it, update it. I'll send one each way.